Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Game of Thrones when it's coming. In today's episode we are going to take a look at something that I have been requested to do. Uh, a lot of people find the new event All Out War rather confusing and they have a hard time understanding what exactly are the rewards, how you get the rewards, what's the daily stuff, what's not daily and so on and so on. And in this video we are going to take a look at some of the rewards that are available and then of course the daily stuff and how you can get the daily rewards and perhaps also some other small things that might be useful to know. So let's jump right into it. The first thing we'll take a look at is the daily contribution, um, which is the way that you can get your daily coins uh, that you can use in the contribution shop. There's a limit to 1500 uh, coins every day, um, unless you have the VIP pass, which increases that limit to 2200. You can get the points or the coins rather in various ways. You can get them by producing or help producing vehicles. You can do it by help uh, upgrading constructions or doing construction constructions. You can do it by gathering, and you can also get it by rebuilding villages. Granted, rebuilding villages is probably the diffi most, most difficult one because um, after the early stages, the villages will kind of like already be rebuilt, so it only lasts for a limited amount of time. But the gathering is potential the entire time to get there. Uh, the vehicles you can get depending on your leaders, but if there's enough resources they will probably also be constantly in the shop and be upgrade upgradable. And the building upgrades are also possible to get uh, depending on um, how active your leaders are. Keep in mind that once you take uh, one quest from it, the limit increases, but it will be reset uh, for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be back down to 6,000 for the first quest, and 9,000 for second, and 18 for third, and 18 for fourth, and so on and so on. So don't worry about that. These things reset, of course, so you can get your points back. And then, of course, um, building constructions and uh, city rebuilds and so on will show up in this little arrow over here on the side where you can click on then you can click on the hammer and then apply an army that you want to send there and the army has to like you have to see it go to the place and vanish then it will start uh, doing um, points giving you points and in terms of workshop you'll go in here and you can see in production queue all the resource wagons that are being worked on currently and you can click on the go to procedure and then click one of your army and click production and they will go in there um, keep in mind you can only set one army for one wagon so if you have to send all three you will need to go on three different wagons but it's somewhat simple uh, nothing really difficult in that regard so let's jump next on the list before we take a look at the elimination and healing uh, rewards, I forgot to mention that in the daily um, rewards that you have to pull out your troops from your node and put them back in for the harvesting um, points to update. Otherwise it won't update automatically, I don't know why, but currently it's set like that. So pull your armies out and then pull them back in uh, if you're on a full and you will see that you are harvesting points as updated. Either way, uh, for elimination rewards is pretty much similar, similar to Glorious Battle in the sense that you have to seriously wound uh, uh, enemies and enemies in this case is of course from uh, enemy factions and not uh, NPCs and there's a various amount of rewards requiring different amount of uh, slaughtering to actually get there and it's not really difficult to understand. The only thing you have to keep in, mi keep in mind is that these are only one time only, so they don't reset daily, they reset each season. Um, so once you have taken the entire page here, then you have to wait for a new season of All Out War to come before it applies. And of course eliminating enemies is uh, fairly simple, you can also see here uh, what each point uh, in Wounded gives. and. You can see T4 gives 8 points, T5 gives 15 points, T3 4 points, T2 2 points and T1 1 points. So it's not really super complicated in that regard. In terms of healing allies, it's a lot more complicated. Uh, a lot of people are confused by the fact that when they heal their own troops, then why do they not get any rewards? And that's because this is only focused around allied troops. And you can see here, 
when troops are deployed as logistic troops, you can obtain healing points by healing wounded allied troops. And you can see how many points you get for whichever type of troops that you are healed. Similar to elimination, instead of eliminating them, it's healing. The rewards apply in the same way. And now you might be wondering, well, how does the healing then work? And for the healing to work, you will require a special type of wagon, uh, which is either a small medic vehicle, a medium medic vehicle, or a large medic vehicle. And you can see here that the special feature is that it can heal allies when in a logistic state, which is uh, super e easy to understand. You can also see here, here that um, that they reduce the cost in replenishing resilience or in healing uh, troops. And downside is it's 10% uh, slower than other troop types, so you can look at it as a medical vehicle, uh, like in war movies that's running around. And because of that, you will have to set up an army. And instead of picking a resource wagon, you will have to pick a medic wagon here uh, to take in. And then, of course, click down here to convert to logis logistics, because that way it allows you to heal troops and the game will know, okay, this is the type of uh, marching setup that you're going with. And once you have done that, you can take out the march and then you have it here. And for your healing to actually be working and stuff like that, then you will have to go to the warehouse and pull out wheat and take with you. Um, because you need the wheat to either heal resilience or healing enemy troops. And so it can be a little bit confusing, uh, but I believe that it's something that's going to be super crucial in the later stages of the game. Next up, we're going to take a look at the faction-based uh, rewards. And these rewards are also similar to Glorious Battle and apply to the entire faction. And it's something that you can do yourself to help uh, along with, but it's not something that uh, one person can do by themselves, basically. The war progression is similar to Glorious Battle in the sense that it gives you a certain amount of quests that you have to do and they have timed and gives you rewards if you do them in time and gives you doesn't give you anything if you don't make it in time and you can see it here right now that the current uh, quest we have going on is that we have to occupy at least two cities by the end of the countdown and that at the end of the countdown that the next progression part will open up and I believe that's the defensive border between the faction that you're closest to and then of course you get a certain amount of rewards, weapon pack chests, uh, bad chests and so on. And these are these the timed quests that are based on how far you are into the all of war event. So it's uh, not really something that's unusual because it's similar to Glorious Battle. These events here are not timed events, they, these are one time events that gives you Alliance supplies, which is what you need for the healings, and then the individual reward, which is the uh, equipment, general material, for example, uh, or healing. And also notice that it's uh, all out war heals, so I believe you have to use them in this season, or they will be lost, but I'm not entirely sure. But these quests here are also faction based, uh, occupy four cities across uh, the faction. And they will open up once you have uh, achieved the different quest uh, requirements that are currently going on. As you can see, we have managed to do the first two quests, and the third quest we can't do until the uh, next part opens up. I would assume that borders or that the uh, walls and uh, potion uh, areas are considered cities, but these are pretty much. Um, faction based as well and of course the rules we have of course the rewards as well here these rewards are based on the faction kingship uh, rewards which is for the entire faction depending on whatever rank you end up in in the faction and then there's the battlefield individual animation ranking which is the overall ranking similar to close battle where those that have killed the most will get rewards based on that instead and overall not really super difficult but this is individual rewards and this is faction based so keep that in mind and if you always like, want to know what's going on in terms of faction you can keep here uh, you can look here and then you can see how the rankings is currently what rank uh, your faction are and 
overall you can keep track of things this way. But I hope this video helps you out a little bit with the daily things and understanding how different reward systems in the event works and how to get them. Uh, I hope you will support the channel, subscribe to the channel if you can. Uh, comment down below if you want to have a specific video I focus on, a uh, specific topic. And of course, if you like the video, then I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the game, then there's going to be a link for the game of this Game of Thrones Windows Coming Discord group. And if you want to play the game, there's also going to be a link down in the description below. And I hope you all will enjoy the event and take care. Bye bye, guys.